morning. Good 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 morning. Sunday, and that is uh, right after worship is the uh, 5K walk to stop child hunger. Immediately after worship, and we'll meet at the Rails Trails by the Haunted House. So uh, the proceeds of that will go to our backpack program, and uh, that's it. So uh, I would invite you to stand if you're able for our call to worship. Come, Holy Spirit, ignite our heart with joy and confidence. For God has done wondrous things for us. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with the power of the rushing wind, that we may faithfully serve you in all that we do. For Christ has called each of us and blessed us. Come, Holy Spirit, be with us today. Help us to boldly proclaim Christ risen. Now for opening it up. Receive your power. 
How us to proclaim the wondrous thing you have done and continue to do in our lives. Give us strength and courage to share the good news of your love and your presence. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I invite all the children to come up for children's message. And so we'll be doing that. something happens and we say, how did that happen? That had to be because of God. And when Sue was nine years old, anybody here nine? You're older than nine, right? Yeah. It, she was nine years old. She was go. she lived in Des Moines, Iowa. Anybody know where Iowa is? You probably had to study had to study that. Yeah. Probably haven't ever been there. But anyway, and in the winter time, way back then, they didn't put ice on the streets, they put sand on the street. To whenever the you know, whether it was icy. So they didn't have anything to melt them with. They didn't have salt to melt the the, the snow. So anyway, so when she was nine years old, they, at her school, everybody had to go to school, walk up to school, and it was a busy street right out in front of her house. So they had a stop sign, and the patrol boys put the stop sign out in the morning. And so she was out waiting to go across the street, and the patrol boy said, go ahead. He had the stop sign out. Well, some lady who was taking her kids to school wasn't paying attention, and she hit her with the car. And the car drove right around her legs and went over one of her legs and had a tire mark on it. But she had this scarf on her head. Now, she was really lucky because it was gym day, and back in those days, little girls weren't allowed to wear skirts to school. She had jeans on that morning, and her jeans were full of sand, just all lots and lots and lots of sand, just in, because that's what was you know, on the road, because it was April, and they'd had a lot of snow in the winter, and they put sand down. So then, she crawled up onto the sidewalk, and then they looked at this scarf 
and the, the jeans were all full of sand, and there was no sand on the sky. And you know why? It was a miracle that she didn't have her head hurt at all, just her one leg. That was a miracle, because we don't know how that happened. She, she rolled over, she rolled me over, and the tire went over my leg, and it didn't hurt. So that's why we wear this scarf to remember that we had a miracle when she was a little girl. So you just watch during your life and you will see miracles for other people and you will see miracles for you. And always remember that God is with you all the time. And when something like that happens. Another part of this story is that of course, her mom and dad took her to the hospital right away, to the emergency room, and it was the Methodist. It was the Iowa Methodist Hospital, just like we have a Methodist church, we have Methodist hospitals. Did you know that? There's one in, there's one in Kalamazoo, that's the one in Michigan. Anyway, while I was there, Roy Rogers and Dale Evans, have you ever heard of them? <laughs> they, no, nobody's heard of them. They were very popular. We didn't have TV. We didn't have TV. And when we got to Iowa, we didn't have any. There was no TV on yet. So we always went to the movies, and you saw Roy Rogers and Dale Evans. So they were movie stars. And they were visiting, and they came to the hospital while she was there, and they came in her room while she was waiting to get to see. So she got that too. That was another surprise, wasn't it? I don't know if that was a miracle, but that was a real <laughs> surprise. Anyway. So you just never know what's going to happen, do you? Sometimes we have bad things. Finds more proof, more evidence that God loves us. Yet we all have to do, all we have to do is what Jesus did. Trusting God completely, foolishly, and daringly. Join me as we pray together, telling God how hard such trust is for us, hoping that God's gracious spirit will dance in our hearts. Holy Spirit, we're not sure we're ready for your awesome power to blow through our lives. We've grown comfortable with our familiar habits and way of being. We're afraid to give up our own waking slumber and face the truth that we do not truly live. We cling to our ways and the safety of familiar paths. Wake us up, shake us up, heat us up, and breathe your life into us. Walk with us, O oh God, and give us the courage to follow the way that is lit by the fire of your spirit. On this day of Pentecost, we pray for the audacity to ride the wind of change. Amen. Please take a moment for your own sign of confession. words of assurance of our forgiveness. Hear these words of Jesus. Peace I live with you, and my peace I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. In the midst of our fears and doubts, the peace of the Holy Spirit will prevail. Amen. Amen. Our scripture readings today comes from the book of John, 20, 19 through 23, and Acts, and Acts, 2, 1 through 12.
When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house were of the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed him showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. And now our reading from the book of Acts 1 through 12. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from the heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as a fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in their other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under and living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native languages? Perithians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Capricia, Pontus and Asia, Phygra and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speak about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The apprentice came nowhere near matching the master's genius, so he asked to borrow the tools of the master. After several weeks, the young man came to him and said, I am not doing any better with your tools than I did with mine. The teacher replied, so it is not the tools of the master you need, it is the spirit of the master that you need. In John 20, verses 21 through 23, we read when Jesus came to the upper room where the disciples gathered behind closed doors in fear of the Jews. Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. In Acts, verse 1, um, <laughs> verse 4 through 5, he commands them, Do not depart, depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit in not many days from now. Jesus had promised the disciples before the ascension that the Spirit would come to them and give them power. It had been ten days that the disciples were waiting in the upper room. Can you imagine the conversations that was going on then? Some probably wanted to leave, while others were going to wait and see what would happen. And others who remembered Jesus' appearance before still had the faith to wait. 
Then the great moment arrived. If we look at the text from Acts, we see that the Spirit arrived by itself from out of nowhere. The Spirit descended upon the disciples as they were going about their daily tasks. Some were cooking, some were cleaning, some were just resting and lying around, but it descended upon them and happened to each of them. The disciples did not ask for it, but Jesus had promised it. It came and filled the disciples with its power, as Jesus had promised. The spirit of the Master, Jesus, rested upon the disciples also and filled them with the gifts of the Spirit. Also, as Jesus had promised, the Holy Spirit came of its own free will and empowered the disciples to spread the word of God throughout the land, thus the beginnings of the church. Think about this. The spirit of the Master and the spirit of Jesus and the Holy Spirit came and entered into the souls of these people on Pentecost and collided with their own spirit. We all have our own spirits within us. It is the spirit within us that drives us, empowers us, causes trouble for us. A spirit that wants what's good for me, myself, and I. We have a spirit which is defiant, which takes pride in itself, and wants to be in control, <clears throat> one that wants to be independent, and one that wants to control the self. It is this spirit within us that the Holy Spirit comes to and wants to change. It is God's spirit that came to those people on the day of Pentecost and collided with their own spirit. It is the spirit that comes to us on the day of our baptism and collides with our spirit for control of our lives. It is the spirit that comes through the word and the sacrament and collides with the spirit day in and day out. Because of our fallen nature, we are filled with pride. Pride in ourselves, pride that someone says we don't need God in our lives. And it is that spirit in us that the Holy Spirit comes to replace each and every day. The following Aesop fable shows us very clearly how too much pride can and will create problems in our lives. A tall, straight fir tree which stood towering in the forest was very proud of his height and dignity, and he despised the little shrubs that grew around beneath him. One day a bramble asked him, Why are you so proud? Because, replied the fir tree, I look upon myself as the finest tree for the beauty of any in the forest. My top shoots up towards the clouds and my branches spread round in constant loveliness, while you crawl around on the ground, likely to be crushed by any animal or person that comes near. Well, all this may be true enough, replied the bramble, but when the woodman comes and marks you for cutting down, and the axe is going to be applied to your root, I fancy you will wish you could trade places with me. The moral of this story is, pride always goes before the fall. Yes, you and I are filled with pride, a pride that says we don't need anything in our lives to keep us going or to help us. We can handle everything on our own. But God comes to us with the spirit of love and kindness. God does not want us to fall, but to live in Him and His Holy Spirit. Through Jesus, the work of salvation was begun, and now, through the Holy Spirit, that work will continue in our lives. God wants us to live in Him and through Him. In closing, let this story I'm going to tell you be the one that shows how our lives can be touched by the Holy Spirit. A mother, wishing to encourage her young son's progress on the piano, took him to a Paderewski's concert. For those of you who are not familiar with that name, he was a great pianist, and later he became the Prime Minister of Poland. After they were seated, the mother spotted a friend in the audience and went to greet her. 
Seizing the opportunity, the little boy rose and wandered away to explore the concert hall, and he went through a door that was marked, no admittance. When the house lights dimmed and the concert was about to begin, the mother returned to discover her son was missing. Suddenly, the stage curtains parted and the spotlight focused on the grand Steinway on the stage. There, to the mother's horror, sat her son at the keyboard, innocently picking out Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. <laughs> at that moment, the great piano master made his entrance. He quickly moved to the piano and he bent and whispered in the little boy's ear, Don't quit, keep playing. Then leaning over, he reached down with his left hand and began playing a bass part. Soon his right hand reached around the other side of the child and he added a running obligato, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> Together, the older master and the young novice transformed a frightening situation into a wonderfully creative experience which left the audience mesmerized. Now is the time we need to watch and see how the Holy Spirit will transform the world through us, how it will mesmerize us. Amen.
primary work of God's people. It is a vital connection to God where we can hear from, listen to, and respond to God. I encourage you to pray as part of being a healthy disciple. Here are some folks you can pray for this week. Daughter Carrie with sepsis infection of shoulder. Prayers for Laura, stressful time. Prayers for baby Red for recovery of his surgery. Our joys and blessings are excited to participate in the 5K hunger today. Bless the walkers for this backpack and outreach. Thank you for the generous gift from the congregation, everyone, and for everyone who came to my graduation party, Amy. Bow our head in prayer. We would like to settle into a nice and comfortable routine, O oh God, in which we don't have to do much of anything, just sit back and relax. We are tired and wonder if we have anything left to give of our talents, our spirits, our lives. So the story of the disciples hiding in the upper room is not uncomfortable for us. We want to hide too. But you have come to us in your resurrection love. We have seen the prints of the nails in your hands and feet. We have felt the wound in your side. We have been with you on the seashore, but we still quiver with fear and uncertainty. Send your Holy Spirit upon us today. Let the rushing wind of your spirit stir us up to action for good and healing. Let the flame of your power ignite our hearts with passion for justice and peace. As we have lifted up to you the names of these people today asking for healing mercies, may we also add our own names asking for empowerment and renewal of our spirits. Take us and use these gifts in our talents for healing in your world. Help us to be bold in our proclamation of your great news and love and hope. We pray all of this in the name of our resurrected Savior who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, Prophets, 
And so, with your people on earth and with all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your children. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with the sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from the slavery to sin and death, and made us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and said to his disciples, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in unison with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on the gifts of bread and wine. Make them for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry in the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast in his heavenly banquet through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your church all honor and glory is yours almighty father amen let's skip down to the unison reading at the bottom of the page give us today our daily bread Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing of the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Whoever's going to help, would they come forward?
This table is open. Come one and all.
take our closing hymn. Thank you. 